Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe to make people's heads explode next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Raz from Psychonauts, because Psychonauts is an amazing game and Psychonauts 2 is coming out. I am very excited about it. If you're like me, you grew up watching Cinematech on G4 Tech TV, which I'm now realizing was literally just a half an hour of advertisements that also had ad breaks. But while watching it, I saw the trailer for Psychonauts and obsessed over it. I begged for Game Informer subscription just to watch out for Psychonauts articles and lamented the fact that I had a PS2 instead of an original Xbox, which meant that I had to wait three extra months for the game to come out. And it came out after my birthday. For my birthday that year, I literally got a receipt for a pre-order at GameStop. I missed 2005. I was 10, the same age as Raz is in the game. Life was easier back then, sure. I couldn't buy my own video games or write them off on my taxes, but I also didn't have to pay taxes. And I didn't need to know that those taxes are most likely paying for a bloated police force that at the very least needs restructuring or a war that I don't support that's been going on for nearly two decades rather than taking care of sick people or making greener infrastructure so that we don't all die in 60 years. Like all of that was happening in 2005, but I just didn't know about it. And that was better because at least I didn't feel helpless in a country that hates the working class. Anyway, um, Raz build. Here you go. Do you ever look at someone and wonder what is going on inside their head? Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to be an acrobatic boy jumping around to make our dad proud. Maybe that was my issue. I'm not very good at jumping. Next, we need psychic powers because you don't want to be an acrobat. Shouldn't you be the one who gets to decide what you do? It's your life after all. I'm really working through some issues in this video. Finally, we'll get into people's heads to help them clear out their emotional baggage. Must be nice. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. We're gonna kick things off with intelligence. Psychic powers obviously come from your mind. Aberrant mind sorcerer, never heard of it. I have, I made a couple videos with it. Mewtwo, go check it out. Dexterity next, even if you don't want to be an acrobat, you're a pretty good one and you're not so bad at sneaking either. Wisdom after that, if intelligence is psychic offense, wisdom is psychic defense. Since most charming and mind control spells are wisdom based, this will keep you safe from other psychic soldiers. Follow that up with constitution, that's also a good way to protect yourself from psychic stuff because it makes you not die. Charisma is a bit low, you're not exactly the most charming kid, you're a bit overzealous and will jump strength. If you can lift things with your brain, why would you use your arms? Other than for sick gains, obviously I'm in support of sick gains. Raz is a human, but he's small because he's a child and children. Children are small, so if you want to be a small-sized human, custom lineage lets you do that. You can basically be a variant human, but small-sized. Hooray. For your feet, Eldritch Adept lets you take an Eldritch Invocation without being a warlock, which means that you can get beast speech and cast Speak with Animals without being a druid. This lets you talk to animals for 10 minutes, but since you can cast it at will, you can just do it anytime you want for zoolingoism. Speak with Animals isn't on the spell list we have. This is the only clean way to get it. Also, the telekinetic and telepathic feats are for more non-magical characters that just want some psychic stuff, because casters can just get those things. There's no reason to drop a feat on it. Anyway, bump your dexterity with your two free points, grab deception for your skill of choice, and build your own background for arcana and investigation because we need those, and I'm not taking the entertainer background because we can get acrobatics from our starting class. Get ready to smash that dislike button if the political stuff at the beginning of the video didn't already make you do that because we're starting with Monk. Let me defend myself here. Raz starts off with acrobatic abilities and very minor psychic abilities, mostly a spectral hand and a double jump. Those things will get fastest from Monk. We'll start with acrobatics and stealth skills to succeed at the circus, but also succeed at running away from the circus. All monks get martial arts, letting you use your dexterity modifier for your unarmed attacks. They'll deal 1d4 plus your dexterity modifier, and you can make an unarmed attack as a bonus action after you make an attack with your action. We'll get psychic hands to throw hands with in a second, but for now we get unarmored defense, making your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor. Raz isn't exactly rocking a set of plate mail, and you can't use martial arts with armor on, so this works out nicely. Second level monks get key points they can spend to do cool psychonaut stuff like step of the wind letting you dash or disengage as a bonus action and double your jump distance for a little double jumping fun. Also it'll help make up for your terrible strength score. Patient defense lets you dodge as a bonus action so you can hold L1 and then hit X to do a little dodge or depending on your controls it could be a different thing. Flurry of blows lets you make two unarmed attacks instead of one with a bonus action for a three hit combo like Raz's three hit combo even if it's not a floating fist just yet. All monks get to run a little bit faster thanks to unarmored movement, you can really start scooting around camp with your levitation ball, so I'm saying we've got mobility options. Gotta love mobility options. 
Third level monk is what we're really here for, giving us a monastic tradition like Way of the Astral Self. That's right, it's not just for JoJo's characters. First, you get Arms of the Astral Self, forcing a dexterity saving throw of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and wisdom modifier on creatures within 10 feet of you, dealing 2 monk die worth of force damage to those that fail. But even better, after that, for 10 minutes, you get some spectral arms that attack for you, extending your unarmed attack range by 5 feet. You can use your wisdom modifier for the attack rolls, but don't do that. Just keep using dexterity, and you can use your wisdom modifier for your strength checks, which you should do because that's better. All monks get to deflect missiles, letting you reduce the damage of incoming ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your monk level and dexterity modifier as a reaction, and you can throw it back with a key point if you reduce the damage to zero, put the shield up, then telekinesis your stuff back at everyone who tried to shoot you. We'll do one more level of monk for slow fall, letting you reduce falling damage by five times your monk level as a reaction, holding a little psychic balloon over your head to stop your knees from exploding when you hit the ground. You also get an ability score improvement, we'll actually get our dexterity modifier up before we start doing some basic braining. And we'll do that as a wizard. Aberrant Mind is a nice way to make a psychic, I'm not saying it isn't. And the newest psychic wizard kinda got abandoned, but there are a few more spells on the wizard list that we really need. And there kind of already was a psychic wizard. We'll get more into that soon. First, you get cantrips and spells. Mage Hand lets you lift objects weighing 10 pounds or less with a floating psychic hand. Message lets you telepathically whisper to someone within 120 feet of you, and they can whisper back, and Mind Sliver forces an intelligence saving throw of 8, plus your proficiency bonus and intelligence modifier on a creature. Failing that, they take 2d6 psychic damage and have a d4 penalty to their next saving throw, making this some marksmanship you can really spam. This is what I mean when I say we don't need telepathic or telekinetic. At first level of wizard, we have both of those and a damage cantrip for free. For your first level spells, jump and long strider take your self levitation to the next level. Jump triples your jump distance and long strider adds 10 feet to your movement speed to really scoot around. Feather fall removes falling damage for up to five falling creatures as a reaction in case you're falling with friends. Shield adds five to your AC as a reaction, which can actually pair with patient defense to give enemies disadvantage to hit your AC plus five. That should keep you safe from all but the biggest of brain blasts. Catapult lets you yeet things with your brain, forcing a dexterity saving throw on a creature and dealing 3d8 bludgeoning damage if they fail, which hits a little bit harder than your brain blast. Finally, Identify tells you what a magical item is, what it does, and how many charges it has left. There's nothing in the spell that specifies you don't put bacon next to your ear to make an old man come out of your head to explain things to you, so obviously, that's how it works. You have six spells in your book, I'd call it a merit badge sash, and you can add to every level, but can only prepare an amount per day equal to your intelligence modifier plus your wizard level. Every wizard gets arcane recovery, helping you recover spell slots on a short rest. It can be hard to get a long rest at a summer camp. Those beds are basically stone slabs with sandpaper blankets. Choose a camp they want to attend, and the camp of enchantment is pretty enchanting. You can use a hypnotic gaze on a creature, forcing a wisdom saving throw on them and charming them if they fail. While charmed this way, they're incapacitated, and you can keep holding it as long as you don't move away from them or if they take damage. After that, they're immune to the effect for the rest of the day. But this means it's a concentration free way to incapacitate someone that doesn't use a spell slot. That's very good. For this level spell, Mage Armor makes your AC 13 plus your dexterity modifier for eight hours when you're not wearing armor. It's a little upgrade from the monk unarmored defense that cuts down on the madness of multi-classing. Burning Hands forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 15-foot cone, dealing 3d6 fire damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. It might piss off Smokey the Bear, but a flamethrower can be a very effective weapon at a wooded campsite. Third level wizards can learn second level spells. Tasha's Mind Whip forces an intelligence saving throw on a creature, dealing 3d6 psychic damage if they fail, half as much if they succeed. Even better though, if they fail, you force them to choose a move action, an action, or a bonus action on their next turn, effectively taking them out of combat for a round. Detect Thoughts lets you dive into someone's mind, reading surface level thoughts and prying deeper into their vaults if they fail a wisdom saving throw. That's kind of why you need your wisdom modifier to be so high. Engaging in psychic warfare, it might be nice to have well-guarded secrets. Fourth level wizards get another ability score improvement. Intelligence will be our next stat worth investing in, but since it's odd, round up wisdom too. For this level spell, invisibility makes you invisible for up to an hour depending on your concentration or if you attack or cast a spell. But you've got an hour with your massive mobility options for Monk, so it should let you get to be wherever you need to be undetected. Levitation lets you lift objects that weigh 500 pounds or less. If that object is a person, they can make a constitution saving throw to resist. Whatever you get in your psychic grip, you can move it 20 feet per round, and it's worth noting they won't take fall damage when you drop them. It lasts for 10 minutes, depending on your concentration, and has a lot of great uses if you're creative enough. Fifth level wizards can learn third level spells, and in the trailer for Psychonauts 2, it looks like Raz gets something akin to slow. Slow forces a wisdom saving 
throw on up to six creatures in a 40 foot cube failing that they have a negative two penalty to their ac and dexterity saving throws they can't take reactions their speed is halved and they can only take an action or a bonus action not both if you use it on a caster when they try to cast a spell you get to roll a d20 and delay them from casting the spell for a round if you roll an 11 or higher lasts for a minute depending on your concentration and is one of the best aoe debuffs in the game clairvoyance lets you set up an invisible sensor that you can see through somewhere within a mile of you that you've been and you can look or listen through it for 10 minutes depending on your concentration not totally how clairvoyance works in the second act games for that you need gaze of two minds it's a warlock invocation you could swap out for beast speech really up to you choose which one you'd like Sixth level enchantment wizards get instinctive charm, letting you make someone who is attacking you attack someone else instead, forcing a wisdom saving throw on them as a reaction. You can only do this once per long rest, but getting hit is bad because it's, you know, getting hit and you're a kid, so stop that from happening. For this level spell, Intellect Fortress gives a creature resistance to psychic damage and advantage on intelligence, wisdom, or charisma saving throws for up to an hour depending on your concentration, which can be a really solid defensive option in a wizard war. Sending lets you send a message to a creature that's on the same plane of you, or even another plane though there's a five percent chance it fails but this is like a high-powered telepathy like 5g spell phone seventh level wizards can learn fourth level spells otiluk's resilient sphere creates a bubble for a creature of large or smaller that nothing can move through no spells no attacks no nothing it lasts for a minute depending on your concentration and can be a great way to protect yourself or lock someone else down though they can make a dexterity saving throw to dive out of the way to avoid it the confusion spell is great for confusing people forces a wisdom saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot sphere failing that they have to roll a d10 at the start of their turn on a one they have to move in a random direction on a two through six they don't get to take actions on a seven through eight they attack a random creature within range and on a nine or a ten they get to act normally these effects can last for a minute depending on your concentration or until they can pass the save it can be nice for chaos sweet glorious chaos eighth level wizards get an ability score improvement keep getting your intelligence modifier up your saves are a little weak at this point for this level spell greater invisibility lets you make a creature invisible for up to a minute depending on your concentration and while it's up they can do anything they want making this a little more combat helpful than the second level version almost like it's greater. Mind Spike from the second level forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature, dealing 3d8 psychic damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. This also stops creatures from hiding from you, as you know their location, as long as they fail to save, for another way to cause some head trauma. Ninth level wizards get fifth level spells, also known as those good, good merit badges. Telekinesis is the main telekinesis spell, letting you lift objects that weigh 1,000 pounds or less with your brain, and you can even lift people as long as they fail a strength check against your intelligence check, and you can move everything around 30 feet per round, every round for 10 minutes, depending on your concentration. You can even switch the things you're lifting, but you can only lift one thing at a time, so don't razz your expectations for this spell too high. The game is funnier than I am. Please don't let that punk keep you from trying it. Immolation is a great way to use your pyrokinesis, forcing a dexterity saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they take 8d6 fire damage and another 4d6 fire damage every round until they can make the save. Keep in mind, this might make people panic and run around a lot, so if you don't want that, don't do this, and try and stay away from them so you don't catch on fire. That's not actually part of the spell, but it's how it works in the game. Hey, DMs, don't catch your players on fire. Don't nerf that spell. It's not that good. 10th level enchantment wizards get split enchantment, letting you affect two creatures with an enchantment spell of first level or higher that should only hit one person. Tasha's Mind Whip is great for that, taking a couple of creatures out of initiative with a second level spell. This level, we're grabbing two weird spells. Big B's Hand is a bigger version of your psychic hand because it's a large hand and you're a small guy. The hand has 20 AC, as much health as you do, plus eight strength and plus zero dexterity. It's controlled with your bonus action Action, you can use it to punch people with a melee spell attack dealing 4d8 force damage or push people 5 plus your intelligence modifier in feet grapple a huge or a small creature squish the grappled creature to deal 2d6 plus your intelligence modifier and damage or block someone giving them half cover and preventing enemies from moving through that space there's so much you can do with it it's a very fun spell check it out and master that hand raz for smash please Dream is the main spell I wanted that sorcerers can't. I also like intelligence as a casting modifier for Raz better than charisma, but dream is the main thing. This lets you pop into people's dreams while they're sleeping and they're on the same plane as you. While in their dreams, you can communicate with them and shape the dream as you see fit with the person you're inceptioning, remembering the dream perfectly when they wake up. If you don't want to just send people brain DMs, you could give them a nightmare, forcing a wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they take 3d6 psychic damage and don't get the benefits of rest. It's a little situational, but if you're fighting a humanoid and non-elf bad guy, you can give them a level of exhaustion and 3d6 psychic damage to start the morning instead of eggs benedict, a famously scrambled type of egg. 
Now I'm dealing psychic damage. 11th level wizards can learn 6th level spells like Mental Prison, which is my favorite confusion spell, forcing an intelligence saving throw and dealing 5d10 psychic damage if they succeed. That's right, it does 5d10 damage if they succeed, and if they fail, it's worse, which is, I mean, how most spells work, but that's a pretty decent fail damage. Anyway, if they fail, they also think the area around them is dangerous and take 10d10 psychic damage when they move through it for up to a minute, depending on your concentration. Lock someone down in a psychic jail or just force them to take a ton of damage. That emotional baggage will not be handled with care. I'll also scoop up haste because I like it and Raz is really fast. Doubles your movement speed, adds two to your AC, gives you advantage on dexterity saving throws, and lets you take an extra action to dash, disengage, hide, use an object, or make an attack. After the spell ends in a minute or you lose your concentration, you have to take a round off of actions and reactions, but this can be a solid way to make yourself a mobile caster. That's always fun. 12 level wizards get another ability score improvement to let you cap off your intelligence modifier, making these last two spells super duper good. Fireball forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 20 foot radius sphere, dealing 8d6 fire damage to those that fail for some AoE pyrokinesis rather than a single target immolation. Skill empowerment gives a creature who has a skill expertise in that skill, doubling their proficiency bonus for that skill for a minute. Maybe if the final level is some sort of meat circus, you could use this to jump around. We're going to finish this off with Monk for more mobility and because Psychic Scream is sort of Dogen's thing, you don't really make anyone's heads explode. We've got all the spells we need to be Raz. Fifth level Monks get extra attack, letting you attack twice with your action instead of once or four times with a flurry of blows and up to five times with a haste action. Since your Monk die bumps up to a d6 here, this can be a solid way to deal some damage when you don't have any slots left. Stunning Strike lets you force a constitution saving throw on a creature you've hit with a melee weapon attack, which can be a punch as long as that punch isn't Big B's hand. It can be a little bit confusing. Anyway, for one key point, you can stun a creature until the end of your next turn, giving you another way to keep people out of the fight. Sixth level monks get key empowered strikes, making your unarmed attacks magical in terms of overcoming resistances, which checks out. You can hit ghosts better with ghostly hands. You also get Visage of the Astral Self, letting you spend another key point when you use Arms of the Astral Self, giving you 120 feet of perfect vision, darkness or no. You've got advantage on insight and intimidation checks, and you can whisper to someone within 60 feet of you like a message, or boom your voice to be heard by creatures within 600 feet of you. The whisper thing is what I'm happiest about, because message makes you point at the person which takes an action. This just lets you talk anytime. It's a little bit faster and less obvious if you need to be clandestine. Seventh level monks get evasion, letting you take half damage on failed dexterity saves and no damage on successful ones. I think that tendrils that come out of the water are more mental than physical. That's why this doesn't work on that. Stillness of mind lets you use your action to remove an effect of charming or frightening. Both can be weapons used by evil psychics. Now you'll be better at handling that. Our capstone is the eighth level of monk, giving you an ability score improvement and letting you cap off your dexterity modifier. Maybe you can be a Psychic and a gymnast. That would be gymnasty. Psychic. Like a kick with psi. Jeez, maybe I should just go to the pros section. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you've got a lot of spells that hit the intelligence modifier, and that's a pretty common dump. Arch wizards might have it, but bigger monsters tend to be pretty dumb, or at the very least, not very smart. You're also super mobile, with big movement speed from unarmored movement, haste and jump to blast around everywhere and get you where you need to go. Finally, your spells have so much utility, lifting impossibly heavy objects, becoming invisible, or becoming scary Terry. You've got options. For weaknesses, you're pretty frail with barely over 100 hp it makes sense because you're a child but still dying isn't fun you also have a lot of concentration spells and only plus one to concentration saves i'd swap out your invocation feat for resilient or warm age if you're power building this finally having a lot of concentration spells isn't always that great because you can't have two up at once but just use the right merit badge for the right situation figuring out what you need to do is your job as a psychonaut the brain is a muscle and you're gonna flex it saving all your friends and making your father proud or don't it's okay if you can't, just make yourself happy. I'm gonna go play Psychonauts and not think about it. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.